since our last um, uh, episode that we did on measuring the addiction six, uh, we had a lot of people viewing our um, little video and we've been asked to do another one. Uh, this evaluation will be done on the uh, Asics Kayano. Um, it's a great shoe. Uh, it's got a heel to toe ratio of uh, 12 to uh, 24 and it weighs about 11.2 ounces. It's a very nice shoe, very lush shoe. Uh, my next test, we're going to be testing the structural parameter of the shoe. Uh, we'll measure it, we'll put it into our mathematical model, and we'll come up with its um, shoe stability index, and we can tell you who should be in it. So we'll move on to our, our next station. That look, look all right? Mm -hmm. Good. So the goal on measuring the structural parameter of the shoe is to measure the firmness of the heel, of the midsole under the heel for the rear foot stability, and we'll measure the long axis of the shoe for the medial support of the shoe. We'll take both of those structural parameters. We'll put them in our mathematical model and we'll come up with a shoe stability index. And from there we can tell who should be in that shoe. So we'll place the shoe into our indexing machine. We'll place the calcaneal block at the end of the shoe and we'll lock it down. We'll tie the shoe up. And we'll lock the shoe at the heel to 100 pounds. Then at the metatarsal heads, the shoe is locked to 40 pounds. The next thing we'll do is we're going to take a temperature of the midsole to make sure that it's at the temperature that we normally test our shoes. And it's 74.5 degrees, so that's just about where we test all of our shoes. So the first test we're going to do is we're going to test the midsole of the shoe, and we're going to take it and we're going to rotate the shoe 15 degrees and we're going to measure the amount of uh, torque that it produces and that tells us our midfoot uh, support. So we slowly bring it to 15 degrees. The shoe measures 40 inch pounds. So that's the, uh, the amount of measured midfoot stability. We take that and we place that into our mathematical model. Now the next thing we're going to measure is the rear foot stability. So we are going to compress the shoe to 100 pounds and this computer will measure in millimeters how many, uh, millimeter, uh, how many millimeters it took to reach the 100 pounds. That produces or tells us how firm the midsole is and uh, that the firmer the midsole the more stability there is in the rear foot. The more millimeters it takes to get to 100 pounds the softer the midsole is and the less stability in the rear foot. So let's start. So that's 6.82 millimeters it took to get 100 pounds of pressure. So we'll put that into the formula.
And with our mathematical model, it has a shoe stability of index of 47.9. So each one of these measurements have a mathematical value in our uh, formula. So let's go to the chart and see where this ends up on our spectrum. So here we have 40 pairs of shoes that we've uh, tested. All of the shoes that we test are put into incubators for 48 hours so that the midsoles are all at the same temperature. Otherwise, this is very unstable, the midsole. So you have to test them all at the same uh, temperature. So as you move up the chart, the shoes get more and more stable. The highest stability shoe is here, the lowest is here. The A A6 Cayano measured at 47.9. So uh, it would be in, uh, it would be considered uh, in the minimal stability spectrum. In other words, it's a fairly, it's very soft in the uh, hind foot or rear foot, and it has minimal stability. In the, um, in the midfoot, it is also has a low amount of stability. So the best person to be in this shoe will be a runner who has a neutral to minimal uh, pronation. For a, um, for a uh, walker, anyone of any uh, physical stature can be in it. Um, we recommend that the person who runs in this, that's a minimal to neutral foot, be uh, of the lighter stature, otherwise we say maybe 180 pounds or less. So that's where that shoe is. It's a very nice shoe, but it's meant for a runner who is a neutral to a minimal, minimal pronation. So if you take a look at our chart here, most of the runners who are very efficient that have no orthopedic problems should be in this area. Those people that are uh, excessive pronators, flat feet, or moderate pronators of, uh, uh, of a high stature or weighs a lot should be in this area. This area is the therapeutic area. So if you have heel pain, me, uh, uh, medial shin splints, uh, uh, runner's knee, you should be in this area. So that's basically how that works. If you don't know the uh, stability index of a shoe, uh, it's pretty hard to recommend a shoe. It's very important to integrate the shoe index with the person that you're evaluating. So if you come over here, we basically uh, look at our biomechanics. The, the thing that causes the most problems is the torsional forces that go up the, the lower extremity when the arch drops. So when the arch drops, the tibia internally rotates. That locks into the femur. It's called the screw home mechanism. And that goes up into your hips. With excessive rotation going up into your lower extremity, you can get medial shin splints, anterior shin splints. You can get knee pain, IT band issues. And that's all caused by torsion. Two things, primary things that are gonna reduce it is the proper footwear and the strength in the hip, uh, uh, the hip muscles, such as the glutes and the abductors. So when we look at someone walk, the three things we look at, we look at pronation, we look at tibia rotation, and we look at heel deviation. The more movement in those areas, the more stability you need in the shoe. So one of these sessions, I will go through a gait analysis so you can actually see what we do and how we recommend a shoe. All of our shoes on the wall are all documented by their uh, overall stability, their midfoot stability, their hindfoot stability, their cushioning, and who should be in that shoe. And this is all evidence-based information from our testing. So anyway, I hope that helps you out. Does that sound all right?